Well, thank you all for coming. I'm pleased to introduce tonight's speaker, Francesco Freza from Milan. Thank you. Francesco was born in Rome and graduated from the Faculty of Architecture of Rome University in 1990. He trained at Guafmi Siegel Architects in New York. In 1986, he moved to Berlin, where he worked until 1991. From 1991 to 1996, he worked with Gregotti Associates of Milan, in which he took charge of construction sites in Germany and managed relationships with German customers and the government, in particular in Berlin, Hamburg, and Leipzig. He served as an architecture critic for magazines including Casa Bella and Bauvelt, and in 1996 he founded together with Herman Fuenmayor, Gino Garbellini, and Monica Tricario, Pew Arc Studio in Milan. Pew Arc was named Italian Architect of the Year in 2013, a prize given by the National Institute of Architects. Established in 1996, the office is the brainchild of its four founding partners, with whom work 30 other architects and engineers from all four corners of the world. Pew Arts projects take the form of the repercussion of industrial, sorry, recuperation of industrial areas to public buildings, complexes for residential and offices, and town planning. An early encounter with Dolce and Gabbana marked the beginning of a collaboration that has been ongoing for 10 years and has resulted in the execution of more than 40 boutique stores around the world. The Milan headquarters of Dolce and Gabbana, the factory, in Incisa and Valdarno and the requalification of the ex-Metropole Theater, now a multifunctional space for both event and fashion shows. In recent years, Pew Arc has developed a number of projects abroad, including in Russia, where it has an operating office, and in Ukraine, with projects in Moscow, St. Petersburg, Sochi, and Kiev. Among the most recent projects are the business center Quattro Porti in St. Petersburg, which I don't know if we'll see or not tonight, but it's for Gazprom the headquarters of Bentini and Faenza, and the office building in the area of Porta Nuova, which I think we will see. <coughs> Currently under construction, the redevelopment of the former Caproni area is also in Milan. So with that, nobody really here wants to hear me talk anymore. <laughs> so I'm really glad that your schedule would allow you to come here and visit with us tonight. And thank you so much for coming. Francesco Frezza. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much. Um, well, when yesterday Eric uh, proposed me to have a, a little speech here, I was first of all, of course, flattered. But uh, at one point, I thought, "What I have to say? Um, what can I say? I mean, what, what, what could be my contribution?" And actually, I was here just to to see the SIM office, so I was like uh, the one that came just to to learn and, and, and now I'm, I have to speak to you. So what usually when I don't know what to do, I look out of the window. Um, I have very, in, in my office I have a nice window, I look out of the window and here you have a beautiful window so it's even better to look at the window. And when I looked out of the window I saw uh, this beautiful garden from uh, Dan Cayley which is I think one of the most interesting thing that I saw in Chicago. I, the first day I came here, I sat in the garden and I really uh, had the feeling of uh, what it means to create a space, to create a public, public space, to create with architecture on, or non, not only architecture elements, a, uh, uh, um, a link to the context. So what I want to talk today is about context. Uh, because uh, context is actually the issue which for us, for our, for our architecture, is one of the most important things. And uh, at the same time is um, uh, the thing that makes you feel that you are in the right place. So, of course, uh, if I am in Chicago, I would like to be in the context. And looking from the other side of the window, I saw another thing, which is the famous Anish Kapoor. Um, cloud gate, we call it beans actually, uh, maybe you too. <coughs> and um, well, the coincidence is just that every time I speak about context uh, to clients, I always show this picture. So, again, being here, in, uh, uh, sometimes you talk about coincidence, I don't think there are co coincidences, but being here and talking about the context and using an, an image that I've been using for, for so many times to talk about context is a very 
very particular uh, thing. And of course, um, I took the pictures, and uh, you can see me here somewhere. Uh, reflection, part of the context. Because what's, uh, what is context? Uh, um, for me, context is to look around, to understand where you are, to understand what you have around you, and to try to make an architecture that can integrate in the context. No matter what, what is the context. I mean, context can be um, not only physical, not only urban, but can be also financial can be uh, cultural, can be the client even itself, can be a context to work with. Uh, so to look to the context is, from my, in my opinion, one of the, is the main red line or the main red, red draw when we start to do a project. And uh, so because I'm here to talk about PUARC, of course I'm showing you something completely different. So I bring you out of the context, because only when you're out of the context you can start to understand what's the context. Now, actually, I, <clears throat> I thought that um, very interesting was to show also work from others that work in my city, Milan, and I think they work in a very appropriate way with the context. This is a new building from Herzog de Moron, just finished uh, recently. Uh, it's the Feltrinelli Foundation, and I found extremely interesting how they work with the idea of the context, the physical context, the historical context, uh, the reference that I put together, I believe, I, f I feel that there are the reference from, from Herzog de Moron, starting from the, uh, of course, uh, well, the, let's say, the form, the ancestral form of the, of the house, and repeated in a, in a classical, in a Gothic way, uh, the Aldorossi building outside Milan. Um, the typical uh, land, la land uh, farm, farm buildings around Milan. <clears throat> so I thought this is a way of making a project that I appreciate, that I like, because it looks at the context. And as well as uh, Sejima, who did now the, the headquarters from Bocconi University. And also she worked very, very in, in a very interesting way with the context, <clears throat> following the, the intro introversy of Milan. Milan is an uh, amazing city because it has to be discovered differently from other Italian cities which are beauties from the inside. I always say Milan has a beauty from the, in from the outside. I said Milan has a beauty from the inside. You have to discover Milan. You have to look in, in his secrecy in the courtyards. And, one of, and, and this is a typical image of the Milan courtyards which was the place of the city. Milan doesn't have many squares, many, many public spaces, or if, they have, if, if you have squares, there are parkings. Uh, the life was inside the, the courtyards. The courtyards had also a typology of Casa Ringhiera, which means the, the, the house where the, the, the connection was on the facade, which was not only a way of making uh, low-cost housing, but was also a social system. People were living in the courtyard, were watching, well, spying maybe, people go, go, going home, or, but at the same time was a social system. You could understand how, you know, what's, if, if there were dangers in, in the community, you, you, can, you could follow the communities. And these other two buildings are quite interesting, or again, introverted. This was a cemetery with a church in the center, Rotonda de Abezana. <clears throat> and, and this is the University of Milan. Uh, it used to be a hospital, it's three courtyards, and from the outside it's very discreet. When you come inside, it's really a campus. It was built in 1400 as a hospital, as a public hospital, and it's the, exactly the idea of a campus that we have now. So these two examples are for me very uh, significant for what I think is the appropriate way to use the con context, to work with the context. In Milan we had many other examples. We had uh, many big offices like uh, Liebeskind, Zaha Hadid, uh, and other architects, Ayn Pei, who came and built some buildings. We are very open to, uh, for foreign architects. I hope that uh, also Chicago will be the <laughs> same for us. Um, and they work with the context in a different way. 
So that's the, the way I, I showing you this is this because just I want to sh to tell you at, uh, at the beginning. This is for me the way to do it, and not globalize architecture is the right thing. Um, <clears throat> and about globalize our relation between architecture with context and archi globalized architecture uh, was our first experience for this building, the Porta Nuova building, that you mentioned before. Um, it was a competition and uh, when we uh, were invited to this competition uh, we had to confront us with the master plan of Cesar Pelli who did the master plan for the whole area. Um, we always said that the master plan was, a, was looking like a, like a uh, question mark, probably because a Freudian, in a Freudian way Cesar Pelli was questioning his uh, approach to the, <laughs> to the, to the, let's say, to the, to the developing of this part of the city, which is really in the center, and uh, and has approached with, let's say, a different way, which at the beginning we didn't we didn't uh, share at all. Uh, so we, when we invited were invited to the competition, uh, we received a clear brief of the competition, and we said, okay, what we are going to do is to go against the brief, uh, against the rules. But because we have our pass as a punk, we know that when you go against the rule, you have to go to be within the rules. So it's always good to stay in the rules, and that gives you the liberty, the, the freedom to uh, to, to do things, so, oh, sorry. So, um, it doesn't want to stay. This is the area. I'm sorry, now it will disappear again. Anyway, this is the area. Uh, the, the master plan of Cesar Pali was, was looking for a square, uh, around, the, around the square, not on the level of the street. So. Uh, it's, uh, it's higher on the street. Underneath is parking and, and a street going on, which is the highest point in, in, in Milan. I mean, Milan is completely flat. There is nothing so high al as this square. When you get there, you start <laughs> to have uh, <laughs> to need some oxygen because it's uh, nothing is so high in Milan. And uh, and the rule of R Caesar Pelli was very clear: to make buildings, he did these three buildings. To make these two buildings, first they had to be two buildings. Secondly, they had to have different heights. Uh, they had to be like a step, stepping up to the, to the main building with, with the landmark of Milan. Um, there is a kind of uh, portico uh, around the building, so you had to use this kind of, of cantilevering portico. Um, and of course the square meters uh, which were giving from the client. So, we thought we're going to break some rules uh, because we are not sure that this is what we want for Milan. This is the Cesar Pelli uh, project. This is the rest that's coming, you know, the, the, the other buildings that are going down. Uh, because we want to, to relate ourselves to, to the context. And, and the context is what we have around is the Cesar Pelli building and Taragni, which is around the corner there. Uh, the Caesar Pelli building again, and another building of Taragni, uh, you know, with, with the street, with the street access. Or, or Muzio, which is also very close to this, to this area. Uh, these other buildings are also given by, as a master plan, by, uh, uh, from the dimension height from the Caesar Pelli building. <coughs> And even when, in the past, uh, Gioponti was building was building high high-rise building, uh, uh, it was another another approach that was always considering the architecture of the city. So our our position was not to be against high-rise building, but how do you think the high-rise building in this context. Um, or you see how sometimes how violent the architecture can be with the, with, with the existing building. This is an existing building and this is what I am painted around it. Uh, because this is 
what you see here is Kosokomo, so the main street that goes up to the square. Uh, maybe a little bit ideological, but then we said, okay, no, we are not going to do this. We are not going to follow the rules of the competition. Um, this was the era as uh, unbuilt as it was before uh, the construction. This was the idea of the master plan, as you see here, two higher buildings divided. Uh, indication from the, con uh, from the competition. <clears throat> so, and we did something very simple. We take the surface, because of course you can not say to a client you, you make less surface. We took the surface and we simply lower it down and make it wider. And took the height of the buildings around it, the existing building. We took the height of the building next to it, uh, trying to to make a border to the uh, to the let's say old city. Here is the city, so the city comes up here. So to to draw a line between the old city and the new development. The other thing that we did is to keep the um, portico, I, I'm, I'm not sure that I'm using the right wor word, is a portico canopy, so we keep the canopy, but we transform the canopy in a cantilevering piece, part, and then we rep replicate it uh, uh, on the top, so it, it wasn't a canopy, it was like a frame that worked as a canopy, so when you walk around these buildings and you walk around the, the square, you have the continuous canopy, let's say, protected area, but it's not, uh, it's not a canopy, it's a cantilevered building, so that gives us the idea of making something which is suspended, uh, ground floor, completely transparent, and then this, this element, like a frame, that um, is looking the square, like a big TV, we are north, facade is completely transparent, while on the back, we have, on the south, we have the facade with some bla uh, blind blades, which should give you more uh, 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 protection from the sun. Because we enlarged the, the, the plan, of course, we, we had to find solution to, to bring the light in the, in the larger part, especially in the larger part, so we create some, some, some areas, some, some holes, which were, on the other part, very interesting, uh, solution typology for work, open space work, where you have in the open space like uh, public areas where you can go outside, uh, rest, smoke a cigarette. And uh, so what happened is basically this. You see here is the historical city coming to the new development and the line of our building that defined the, the, the height and, and try in, in a way to, to establish a relationship between the old and the new. So this is also being part of the con context, maybe refusing what you have in front, maybe being, being, being not, don't agree with that, but at the same time tr try to create a, uh, a, a relationship. Uh, our reference uh, for the architecture was this very beautiful project from Terrani. Again, Terrani was building around this, this era. This was a competition that was never realized for Brera Academy um, that uh, had, we, th we think, had more or less the same idea of having the ground floor suspended and then this white frame with, with the glass facade or even more the, uh, the architecture of South Americans, Niemeyer and uh, Raidi, which are, even if they're coming from the other context, they belong very strongly to our cultural contest. To be modern, to be contemporary in, uh, as, a, as a scope. Uh, and that was very much the, their, their task, to be always, even in a different situ cultural situation, to be very contemporary. And then we add some of our con context. Uh, we always try to work with art, um, which is not... Uh, I don't like, to, uh, I always hesitate to say that we like to work with art because it's, uh, we, we like, especially from art, the, the, the optical art, the attitude of having uh, an art that uh, changes with the position of the, uh, of the viewer. Uh, so it's not a, a classical art where you have an image and, and 
and the image is quite static, but assume, uh, depending on the position where you're, you're standing, the, the art assumes a different uh, view. And this is something that always comes in our, in our project. The, let's say, humanistic idea that the image of the architecture changes by the position of the person and not the opposite. Uh, so you are the one that create the image of architecture. So, so working with, with optical, opticalism was for us very interesting. Um, we have a big tradition in Italy of op optical art uh, of the 60s, um, where all then the Fontana and, and other artists came out from. And, and I really enjoy also the work of Olaf, uh, Olafur Eliasson, who also works very much in this direction with reflection and opticalism. So that's why uh, the facade towards the, the, the city, which is also the... F this computer doesn't like me. Um, which is also the, the south facade is with blades. Uh, which create this optical effect. Uh, inside, if we have uh, a night view, uh, sorry, oh, okay, uh, there are these this courtyards in, which have colors, so in the night they, they, you can see in this facade these this squares with colors, which reminds a lot the, the, the work that we saw before from Cruz Diez, which is a South American um, I like very much this 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 photo. Uh, I, I don't know how the photograph catch it. It's a Japanese woman dressed like a geisha or a Japanese woman in in Milan. Uh, so this is completely out of the context. Uh, uh, okay, this is uh, you see. I I don't know how to stop this thing. Sorry. You see what happened in the night when the the courtyards are open are lit. Um, and this is again the relation between our building, the existing building, and the new uh, buildings from Cesar Pelli. But one thing happened when the whole thing was finished, is that the square that we considered a, a mistake to do in a city which doesn't have a uh, difference of, of height or any, any tectonic, uh, a pedestrian uh, square rising for, for the floor uh, with this kind of contrast between the two, architect two architecture the square became immediately full not even the shop had to open the square was used by the people people enjoyed like it uh, they organized some concert but even when they are not concert people are really uh, uh, use the square as a destination point and uh, that was a lesson for us because we arrived with our let's say arrogance of saying that we know how you have to plan the city. We, you know, we know how you have to be related to the context. And, and what happened is that, uh, in fact, the real quality of the city is the diversity, the, the ability of, of buildings of being different, but still having a relation between them themselves, and, and creating open space, public spaces, uh, in a way, architecture is defining an empty space. It's something that I would, uh, for example, say for this beautiful garden of Dan Reilly. It's, a def it's defining an empty space and, and the empty space, the public space, this is the real architecture and not what the beauty of or, or the building what's, what's around. So, um, so this was for, for me a, a good lesson, so never be too, too, too arrogant uh, and, and understand that, that the city is complexity, diversity. And, and that is, uh, lead us to the second project. This is completely another place, it's in Russia, it's in St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg, as you know, is, is a beautiful uh, city built in the uh, beginning of the 17th 18th century, 1700. Uh, this building was uh, was commission was a commission and it was in the really in the heart of the city near the uh, Saint Isaac Cathedral. The whole city is under preservation. So with this project, we had the preservation office very uh, put a, a lot of attention to us. Uh, the the building 
as you see, this is the Nieski Prospect, the famous Nieski Prospect, very famous in all the Russian literature books. And we were very close to the, to the, to the Nieski Prospect. The building had a facade on the street, an existing facade on the street. <coughs> you see here, the historical facade was still existing. We had to keep it, or we had to, yeah, to respect it why inside was completely demolished. So the, the idea of the, of, the, of the client was to keep only the facade and make a building in, in the middle. Uh, we said maybe it would be interesting to put upside down, what, uh, to, to reverse the, the, this idea and try to not to occupy the center but to create empty spaces in the middle. So we looked carefully the, the, the plan of the city and the city uh, is made by buildings that have very uh, mm, a multiple of courtyards, and the courtyards there are used as a public space. Sometimes the courtyards are, are most of the courtyards are, are open, and you use the courtyards to, to reach one part of uh, to one street to, uh, to the other street. So it's not an introverted space, but is a really open space that public use. Um, while the facade on the street is very monumental, the courtyards are usually um, very, very, very simple. When you read the, the Russian literature, if you read Dostoevsky, um, especially uh, the famous uh, book, uh, uh, I don't know how it's in English, when the guy killed the old lady with the axes, I like Crime this part, Crime Punishment, beautiful book. Uh, most of the story of the book is inside, is the Andonievsky prospect and in the courtyard. There is always this, this, uh, this two, two lives. The courtyards were the real life of, of, the, uh, of the city. So we thought we have to work on the courtyards and build the space, the working space around. That gives you, give us also the possibility of creating more uh, uh, space with, with natural light. Um, to refer um, the, the, to create uh, courtyards that, that have also a, a, a color, uh, looking at the color of the St. Petersburg, because of the weather of St. Petersburg, St. Petersburg is a very colorful city. Each the buildings have different colors. It's very famous, the Hermitage Museum, which is green, and the Palace of Catherine is, is blue, and then you have the gold of the, of the uh, cupola. So we, our idea was to create, uh, to propose a building that is, um, you know, as a upside down. When you take a thing, do you put it upside down? The courtyards are the building, and you build around. And each courtyard has a different, different identity. Each courtyard has a different color. Uh, the different color becomes also a kind of marketing of the building. So the offices that are on this on this courtyard receive a, a colored badge. Uh, the courtyards are public, so you have to, you can walk around the courtyards and in the ground floor there are the public activities. So again, you can use the building on the, on the ground floor to, 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 to explore and to, to, to get inside the, the, the different uh, spaces. Um, these are two images of St. Petersburg courtyard, and this was again a reference with art. Malevich, an incredible artist. I mean, the, the, the abstractism uh, was really started in Russia with Malevich and Kandinsky. Uh, this incredible squares, color squares with Malevich was uh, inspiration. And again, when I say there are things which are, looks like coincidence, but they are not necessary coincidence, we found out that Malevich was living the last 10 years of his life and died on the opposite, on the same street, on the opposite of our building. So we had the context already in front of us without, uh, just only by looking out of the window. As I said, it's always a good thing to do, to look out of the window. So. Um, I know that sometimes we force a little bit the, 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 the relation, but if you look this image of Malevich and, and this image, I sometimes I see some, some uh, coincidence. Uh, 
This is the building from the outside. Then we have the blue courtyard, then we have the green courtyard, and then we have the silver courtyard. Uh, the, the, the name of the courtyards in, in Russian became a kind of, of a name like where you're going to meet. Uh, I take you, when, when you have a guest, I take you in the golden courtyard, I take you in the blue courtyard. So also these this things became part of the, of the building. Um, the last thing that we wanted to work with were a simple element of the facade. Uh, we wanted to have a facade with colors, re very much reflecting, and uh, uh, the idea was to create this kind of, of uh, kaleidoscopic reflections. So w what we have in, in our image, from, especially from, uh, I was saying, from Olafur Eli Eliasson, uh, uh, sculpture and objects which have this kind of uh, effect of uh, a strong uh, element with, with uh, weird reflections. Uh, and that takes me again to the, to the Anish Kapoor uh, object, which is through the reflection shows you the context. When you look the building, when you look the sculpture, you see the context, you see yourself inside the context, you see the building, which is your context. So this, this, uh, this Anish Kapoor um, uh, sculpture is really a, a great synthesis of what is being related with the context and being, and the context being related with, 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 with yourself or with the, with the architecture. So we propose a facade, a facade that had this wide reflections, uh, giving by, give by sim simply uh, create a, an angle of the, of the simple, uh, single glass elements in the two directions, in the, let's say, in the horizontal part, so the glass part were, were uh, turn it uh, with different angles, and also in the vertical part they were also turn it in a, in a uh, different orientation. Of course, we had a budget, so it was not uh, possible to create a, a something completely uh, out of control. So basically, we had a cell. We thought about a cell, uh, a single cell that was uh, mounted in the factory. Uh, on the cell, uh, it's a module. The module has four, only four variation of position of the glass. Of course, by putting Turning upside down the cell, you have eight variations of the glass. If you, if you start to mount the cell with a, a certain pattern, you have a, a wide range of, of variation that gives you this effect of completely broken uh, reflection. Um, inside, you see here is the main entrance. Inside, we use only travertine, Italian travertine. Not only because we were Italian, so we wanted to use our, our stone, but because the main cathedral of, of St. Petersburg is in Travertine. So again, having two con contests, this one, this one a little bit slight, this cathedral with our, let's say, culture. I'm from Rome, so for me, the Travertine is particularly uh, an important stone. And, and again, we are in, uh, in, in Chicago, where Miss van der Rohe used a lot of Travertine. So, I, uh, I like this triangulation, tri making a triangle from Italy to St. Petersburg to Chicago, tr trying to find always relations. This is the blue courtyard. You can see here in a better way the reflection. So how the reflection of the things is completely broken. Uh, this is the courtyard. In a banal way, each courtyard had also a different uh, ground uh, um, treatment. The green courtyard was green, the blue courtyard had, had water, the golden courtyard had uh, the entrance. I mean, this is, was simple. Uh, we propose also to the client to uh, offer each courtyard to a different artist from a different con country, continent, and make an installation. The crisis came, so uh, they had to cut a little bit of money. Uh, this is the blue courtyard with the travertine and the water. Again, our reference with Mies was, was here. We, we were work, drawing with the books of Mies on the table uh, of the Barcelona Pavilion. And, uh, um, 
the funny thing is that the preservation office, which is very strict, uh, didn't stop this project at, at all. Somehow, I, I, we, don't, we don't understand if they didn't understand it or if they didn't follow it up. Um, and my biggest compliment was uh, from uh, one of the old Russian guy who came inside, very old, uh, with all these uh, medals on, 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 on the jacket because he was in the Second War. And he was looking around and said, I really don't like it. He said, <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand when you are going to put straight these glasses. But I have the feeling that this building was always here, he said. And this was a great compliment because when you are able to create an architecture that doesn't, even if it's a big contrast, but doesn't create uh, um, a, a con uh, let's say, a, a dissonance, then uh, you're happy because, again, city is complexity, city is diversity. I mean, we in Italy, we know how important it is, this is and how is the Italian city uh, has been developed by this co uh, constant con contrast in the, in, in the centuries. And, but how this contrast creates a, a very, uh, it's like jazz, you know, it creates an, an harmony, uh, which is uh, maybe the, the, the beauty of the city. Um, this is the last courtyard. The, the yeah, uh, as, you, uh, as I was saying, each courtyard had a reference to a color, to a building. But all these things then were in our mind. I mean, we, we never, i only telling it to you or to, to some, some, some presentation of, of the building, but it's, it's not important. The process, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's more important, it's not important, the re how can I say, the process is a part that is important as, a, as the result. And, and the result doesn't have to tell you uh, necessarily about all the process. It's, it's the, the right process brings to a result which has harmony or a proportion and quality. Uh, these are some technical drawings. You see how, how the images is completely always broken and, and in a way some, you can see some ab abstractism which is really uh, belonging to the Russian culture. The, the Russian culture is extremely uh, full of, of, of emp empathies, uh, full of passion and full of... Uh, so you understand, when you understand the Russian culture, why the abstractism was born there. Uh, because they are all completely uh, nuts, mm -hmm. I would say. <laughs> crazy. This is how one of these models were, 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 was mounted. So uh, from the factory, you received uh, the, the piece with, with the already uh, glued glass in the metal frame. And then, of course, there was a uh, was very precise job to, to put all the models together in the right way. But then it looks casual, I mean, without, without a rule, which is something that we liked. The last project that I wanted to show you, it's in construction. Uh, it's a theater in, uh, in, um, in uh, Riva del Garda, which is uh, on, on, uh, near, near Verona. Um, here, the approach was completely different. Uh, again, we worked a lot with the context. There, is a, there was an existing building, exhibition building. So the, the theme was the extension of this, of this building. Uh, on the lake, uh, we have here the, the old town of Riva del Garda, and north the mountains starts. So from a point of view of nature, it was an incredible place. And, and we thought that uh, the, to work with the nature was, was a necessary to, to uh, the necessary path approach to, to work then with the context. And uh, again, because context is looking around, looking where you are, looking what you have, and reflecting yourself in the context. So if I imagine an Anish Kapoor bubble in the middle, I, I think it would be the best uh, synthesis to understand why this building looks like that. 
we start working with the different elements, um, the water, the, the old city with the, with the main church. Uh, so we, here you see the, the existing building. We said <clears throat> it would be right that the building react to the concert, context. Uh, that the building is a kind of uh, snake that uh, takes diff a different form according from the things that he's touched uh, by or that he's touching or w that he's relating to. Again, uh, architecture that tries to create a relation, uh, uh, a, a, a dialogue with what you have around. I mean, you can say that also for social relation would be always very important. And then when you have a dialogue, uh, actually you, 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 you lose your prejudice, in fact. So when you have a dialogue, what, what is your context, your architecture, can you lose your prejudice, can start a, a relation with, with, with what's around, even if you arrive with a different language, with a contemporary language in a, in a, in a historical uh, area. So, what happened basically is that the elements were uh, were somehow determined by what they had around the lake, the mountains, the city. We start then working on this idea with forms that uh, are a catalog of different forms, but uh, following the same idea that the, the surrounding gives the form to the to the to the building. Uh, the building is reacting of what they have uh, around. Uh, of course, we had the function to fit in. Uh, the theater the tower became an opportunity of having a landmark. And on the same time, the theater power, tower is related with the center of the city and with, the, uh, with one axis of the street that is linked to the, to the tower of the church. So create a relation with the with the tower of the uh, old church. Um, the lobby was faced to the, to the lake, creating a kind of window. So to reverse the idea of lobby as an inter uh, introverted space, as a place where you look to the outside, to the paysage. So as you see here, here's the theater tower related to the church. The main square of the, of the city has a street that term terminates in in this other square, which was for us kind of the real lobby of the theater. Uh, and, uh, and the lobby, I mean the inter internal lobby, face the lake. So create a big window on the lake. This is a plan of, of the building. <clears throat> and this is how it looks like. Of, there was also this piece trying, uh, that is going to to link to the existing building. This one is the new lobby uh, trying to pretend, uh, it's like a protrusion to the, to, the, to the lake. You see the square there and the te theater. Uh, yeah, this is uh, a model. Uh, this is what you see from, from, uh, from, the, from the lake. Somehow kind of a classical composition from, from an horizontal building transparent with the tower, so also to work with these uh, uh, elements of the uh, Italian architecture. This is the square that you uh, get when you're coming from the other square, which is the central square of the city. So to create a, a, a two pole of, uh, of urban spaces. The roof is the opportunity to to make projection, to show uh, uh, movies, and oh, again, the roof of the building has, a, uh, let's say, this this kind of uh, un uneven form. Uh, looking, thinking about the mountains, the whole building is cladded with the stone of the mountains. The facade of the building is is again with this uh, blades, uh, glass blades, so that when you are in the square. Uh, you have a different perspective, a perspective of the building, so you can, if you face the, that's, I don't know if there is some images, if you face the building uh, 
90 degrees to the blades you see the transparency if you are diagonal the blades are in glass so you white glass so you see like a light box so also to play with this idea of the movement and of dynamic of the of the function um, and uh, and then the yeah the, the, as i said the, the the roof is in in, in in with the same stone of the mountains so uh, the intention was to create uh, organicity with the with the surrounding uh, the building is now under construction so we don't know if it is working i hope so uh, but again if the process is right the result should be uh, as a mathemat mathematical uh, thing should be more or less the same so let's hope and um, well, this is just an image of our office on the roof of our office. Uh, I, I don't have other picture of our, uh, our office, but we have in our office a garden, and we, uh, in the center of Milan, we we, we grow uh, aubergines and pepperoni and and work there. So again, we are playing with context, and we are completely out of the context. So sometimes we are confused, but confusion is is not bad and this is it and after that i'm going to look again out of the window and see what are the new <laughs> perspective for today thank you very much anybody have any questions how far along is the last theater i'm, I'm was it hoping it would show a construction photo uh, the Congress Hall. Uh, well, the con I, I didn't mention this last issue, which is again uh, an issue of context. The theater is the only public building we have, uh, and uh, the other buildings we did in a relatively quick time. Uh, the theater is a building. Uh, by a, a region of the north, which is Trentino Alto Adige, so it's the excellence of Italy, it's the most efficient, they are Germans, they speak in German, uh, they're Austrian, they used to be Austrian. Efficiency, working, administration, and so on. We won the, the competition nine years ago, and it still has to start the construction. So this is part of our context, of the Italian context. <laughs> Uh, that uh, when you do a public building, uh, you never know when it's going to be finished. Or, but not this is the the problem is not for the architects, who have time, and it's for the people because uh, this a public building should serve the people, and and the people of Riva are still waiting for since nine years for this building. So you have to be patient a little bit more, as we are. <laughs> That's different, a little bit different than some of the work we do, which is jokingly referred to as China speed. And China speed, to me, is embodied by this statement, which was said to me by a client. We need to see eight more examples of forms that have been never before seen by man, and we need to see them by tomorrow night at 10 o'clock, <laughs> and they can't be larger than a nine meter grid, and they have to have concrete columns on the exterior wall. See you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> that was the brief. Well, that, no, that was the instruction for the day. <laughs> it's kind of a cycle. So those, they, those sound like they're two opposite ends of a spectrum to me. Yeah. Uh, but they say China is the empire of 10,000 years or whatever, no? Something like this. So we are yeah, Italian. We are waiting also since 2,000 years that we're getting a little bit back, but the Chinese should be patient as well. Their patience is a little bit <laughs> strategic patience. Okay. I have to ask, uh, the uh, uh, Gazprom uh, building, you showed these beautiful minimalist interiors of the lobby, and I noticed you know, one of the things that we struggle with is where do you put all the services, all, the, all your fire alarms? Were these photoshopped out? In the no, 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 absolutely not. Did you manage to hide them? Um, we had uh, 
Well, I, I didn't show you other buildings, uh, Chris uh, was mentioning before. The, we worked a lot with uh, fashion brands. Dolce Gabbana was one of our biggest clients. And we make for them several buildings. And we make for them like 40, 50 shops. And this was uh, quite, I say sometimes boring activity, but incredibly training activity. Because when you do uh, a shop, you are for a fashion brand, you, you have to work in a, in a very sometimes uh, uh, obsessive way of elements that uh, your client doesn't want to see like for example uh, sprinklers uh, fire uh, detectors and uh, and all other this all other things <coughs> and um, because the best shop is when people come in and they don't see anything and, and they say okay well, so the furniture are from Dolce Gabbana, the dresses are from Dolce Gabbana. What did you do? Because it's a white ceiling and that's it. And in this case, you are quite happy. Uh, same uh, strategy, strategy, we use it there. We, uh, the sprinkler were uh, recessed. Uh, the, the smoke detector, we used, uh, it's an English system that uh, it's quite common. It, it's, uh, uh, it has a small holes from a needle that extracts the air every 10 seconds and has a machine on, on, on the, I, I think you have it, you should have this too here in the States. Uh, uh, so smoke detectors, alarms are hidden behind the plasterboard. Uh, so no Photoshop for that, uh, a, lot of, a lot of detail. And a client that uh, follow us. The building was done by an investor who really believed it that to do a very, modern, efficient, uh, let's say, European standard building, he could have a better result by renting it as a, uh, by floors to different companies. And, and Gazprom just saw it and they liked it so much, they said, we want to have them all, which was a big, big uh, a pity for us because the first thing that, of course, Gazprom did uh, is to close the courtyards to the public. Uh, for security reason, they say. So the courtyards were open just a few months, and, and that was a real pity thing. So. Have you worked on any projects where you didn't have any immediate contacts? And if so, how did your <coughs> approach change? In the middle of nothing, yeah, you mean? Yeah. Because we get those all the time. <laughs> yeah, but uh, as I said, the contacts are. Uh, are something, uh, are not only physical context, I mean, it's a the cultural context. We did uh, several uh, projects uh, in Algeria where we worked a lot with, for example, the, 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 the idea of, uh, of, of building in, in, in desert. Uh, we were studying, you know, the, 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 the the construction in the desert from the from the not the construction the the, the way that nomads were putting the, the tent in the desert so we rebuilt our context even in a, in an era that didn't had any any physical context and and the, the nature sometimes is is, is a strong con i mean reference to context the orientation uh, the views the how do you see how you be, you are seen again this uh, this thing from uh, Anish Kapoor for me it's uh, always um, uh, a very interesting thing. I, it was really, uh, I was really <coughs> happy now to, to, to show it again because uh, I showed it so many times in my <laughs> presentation uh, the Chicago thing and, and to be here in this context, in this city, to see it from the window and to show it again it's, uh, it's a good opportunity of, of that. So. Um, if you have uh, five, six hours, I can show you other <laughs> or other project where we didn't have a, a, a physical context, but um, uh, yes, definitely. <clears throat> Anybody else? No? Well, I'd like to thank you for coming once again, and thank you for reaffirming all of our beliefs that Italians really speak with their hands. You really speak with yes. your hands. Yes. You really speak with your hands. Yes, yes. Well, 
That's true. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.